So Chris, how are you doing? Hey, thanks. I'm good. Good. Uh, so the reason I wanted to talk to you was that uh, I have a subscriber reach out to me and he said, uh, and we're going to read this. He says, I have a suggestion for a video. I know many that have a Mac with M1 chip and want to use SteamVR uh, on their Mac in general with their Quest, but I don't think anyone has made an actual tutorial of this. Well, what he doesn't know, and really kind of this weirdness that drove me making the video was the fact that I, that exact same day, had the exact same thought. Oh, really? And yeah, and I was kind of like, you know, I'm thinking about it. He brought it up. Maybe this is the good time to look into it. So uh, the reason I wanted to talk to you is that I have now, I'm on the other side of that entire uh, like effort and had an experience, you know, m multiple experiences, you know, difficulties and such. And, you know, long story short, I came across one of your videos and it helped out immensely. So, um, and, and the relationship to you and that video is a piece of software called UTM. So tell me what is your experience and what is your relationship with UTM? So UTM is basically a uh, emulation app from the, that was its beginning. So there is a, technology called Quick Emulator, which is abbreviated to QEMU. And uh, that's uh, that runs on basically any computer uh, and it can try to emulate a virtual computer. And uh, as I'm sure you've seen, there are limitations and sure. uh, drawbacks to some of these uh, ways it can work. And there's been many updates to UTM since. Uh, it's a really big project now. Uh, tell me about your VR experience. So uh, I've been... Uh, introduced to VR through my university. Okay. Um, they had a course about making VR games in Unity uh, that I took part in. And uh, the, we ended up, so my, my uh, colleagues from university and me, we ended up creating a, uh, a game concept that actually got us our first jobs as oh, VR cool. developers. So that was a struck of, uh, I guess, good luck, but also um, it's just uh, a fun team. And uh, so, yeah, that's how I got basically got into a VR game and then uh, the next year got hired. And uh, so that's how I ended up also working on Labyrinth. So, so the challenge was, can I make Windows VRs, you know, things that aren't Quest, mm -hmm. can I make them work on a MacBook M1? And I think the reason I was thinking about it and the reason my subscriber was thinking about it is because the M1 has proven itself out to be a, a a handy, very powerful processor. And knowing that made me kind of go, you know, maybe now is the time to try once more. My candidates to try hardware-wise was uh, Quest 5, Index, and Pimax 5K. Mm -hmm. And then my next thought was uh, Windows for ARM and Parallels, uh, and then uh, Windows Emulated and UTM. Mm -hmm. So that's the mixture of things. So I'll mm -hmm. tell you, the first thing I tried to do, and I left one th one thing out, is I tried to make uh, a Vive work on Mac OS in Steam VR, and okay. uh, it failed miserably. And so I think you know why it failed, right? Well, your Vive needs to connect via HDMI or DisplayPort. You could adapt that. Mm -hmm. um, to Thunderbolt. So I would guess that it would fail because Steam VR doesn't really work on Max anymore. I thought right. they stopped exactly. support. One hundred percent exactly. Right. Yeah. I like okay. it. I like what we just did uh -huh. there where I'm like, here's how I have it connected and it's like a game show. What do you yeah. think happened? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> so, so what are your thoughts on Mac OS not having any Steam VR or Steam VR not having uh, any more support on Mac OS? What's well, unfortunate? They actually um, introduced this big uh, VR um, like push at one of the Apple events. I, I believe it was with the Mac Pro, uh, yeah. one of the Mac Pros. And they had like a demo uh, and stuff. Um, and it could have, I think it uh, could have been uh, worthwhile because lots of creatives use Macs, even at my company now, uh, even though we have to use Windows for everything, uh, basically. Lots of people still use Macs for uh, other creative tasks. So yeah, um, yeah that's unfortunate. The next thing I did was I thought, okay, Windows, what, what would be the most capable version of Windows running on an M1 Mac? What's going to be something that's running ARM? So Windows for ARM. 
Yeah, for sure. So when is for ARM running in parallels? I, I didn't try Fusion just because it seems like parallels is really pushing their product. And uh, I think mm -hmm. they're ahead of the curve on making it work properly. Mm -hmm. Windows for ARM has uh, x64 emulation. So that with uh, the Oculus software, how do you think it went? I would imagine for such a, like a, uh, let's say a high performance task of running a, a VR headset through a USB cable even, um, I don't imagine it went too well, especially with the um, with the emulation layer of the like the graphics, because your Mac graphics won't run natively in the even in, in like Parallels desktop. Yep, you got it right again. So what <laughs> happened uh, is I installed the Oculus client or started to install it, and within a few seconds it said that it needed it wasn't recognizing an Intel processor basically. Mm -hmm. So what I eventually found is that there's a, a preview version of Windows for ARM that if you get the, the current developer version that the X64 emulation is so much better in it that it will mm -hmm. get you past this Oculus Quest client install error. And it did. Okay. Nice. And then five and a half gigs later of a downloading, uh, it tells me that there was a problem with the install and I had to quit. I eventually found a way to get it installed. And what it was, was you do a forward slash like diag or diagnostic. And okay. that will allow it to get it installed. And then you kill the installation process. So it all remains on, on your machine. So now then I install Steam VR, plug in the Vive, and I turn it on. And what do you think happens? Okay, sure. So plug in the Vive. You would need to pass through the the Vive's USB and display connections uh, mm -hmm. to parallels. But I'm not sure if it supports that. Yep, didn't support it whatsoever. It ah, come back dang. with it was like it was like error 138 or something, saying I couldn't mm -hmm. find the headset. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. um, let's avoid physically connecting anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try to use uh, virtual desktop uh, and. Okay. Uh, install the streamer in Windows for ARM and it successfully installed. So that was, you know, that wasn't a problem, okay, which is great. I then have the uh, virtual desktop running on the Oculus Quest. It sees the client running in Windows for ARM. Awesome. I go to start uh, Steam VR. It has a set of a button uh -huh. in there to say start Steam VR. Okay. And it ends up just failing. Actually, I'm not uh, familiar with virtual desktop. Um, okay. Uh, well, I reached so out to its developer. Uh, okay. Okay. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Gigoden, and uh, he had said you need a, a Windows VR ready PC for Steam VR games to work. Uh, uh -huh. It's not going to work in parallel to the Mac. And, and Guy's a technical guy, so I was trying yeah. to, you know, say like, look, man, just tell me exactly what it is because maybe uh -huh. I can get over a hump. And he just said parallels can't emulate DirectX 11 for what VR needs. Oh, and I, I was like, okay, you know, that makes sense. And this is where uh, I thought, you know what, like, this is, it's a, it's a, a problem of compatibility because of virtualization and an M1 processor, ARM processor. What do I try emulation? And oh, yeah. so that's where I you know, went down the UTM route. Mm -hmm. So with UTM, you I can get, say rabbit hole. That's fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. It was, I think I'm still in that rabbit hole. Windows is up. It's running. Uh, I can install the Oculus client. No problem because we're actually, you know, truly emulating X64 here as opposed mm -hmm. to virtualizing it, you know, that kind of thing. It yeah. got through the install. It, it, it did everything it needed to do. So basically, if I tried uh, connecting an Oculus or connecting a, a Quest, uh, mm -hmm. via the USB-C cable uh, or connecting a an HTC Vive or an Index or you know any of those things. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is probably the end result? So UTM supports USB pass-through and it does USB 2.0 or 3.0. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Oculus, so for the for the, um, the Vive and the uh, Index or the Steam VR based headsets, uh, those I believe require USB 3, but that, and then also additionally, they do require the uh, direct connection to the graphics card. Yeah. Uh, with maybe the one exception was, uh, would be like a Vive wireless kit, but I don't think you've tried that, or, or did you try that as I, well? I did not, but I, I okay. basically emulated that by then 
trying virtual desktop where okay, I was able sure. to avoid, you know, a lot of those, those connections. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, the, the cable connections you're going to run into a missing uh, graphics pass through for yep. UTM. Yep. And uh, with um, the Oculus software, um, I believe that at least on Windows guests, UTM currently doesn't have any 3D acceleration. Right. So it would probably fail to launch any games if it would right. even go into the link mode at all. Com completely all those things are, are what occurred. Uh, huh. So I can't say I was disappointed because I this is everything that I expected to happen. And I feel like I, I gave it a shot. Like I even looked at Crossover and I downloaded Crossover. Oh and yeah, even, and even the, Yeah, and, and Crossover would be kind of like, hey, that's exactly what would be needed. And there are a lot of games that actually work with Crossover. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you when you go looking for, you know, anything like Steam VR, pretty much it's not even listed on, on the Crossover site. And yep. anyone on Reddit or otherwise are just like, yeah, it's not even gonna work, don't even try it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I came at this the problem from every di direction, you know, multiple uh, VR headsets, different brands, models, different ways of connecting, um, virtualization versus emulation, um, yeah. trying to run native on Steam VR on a Mac, and it all came up to just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the I think you know that that. It's the answer I wanted, but it's uh -huh. not the pretty thumbnail image I hoped, which was me like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I had so, you know, got it working. And yeah, I didn't get that uh, satisfaction whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what do you think is the future of, uh, you know, Windows PC VR emulation on uh, the M1? And after that, what do you think is gonna be the future of VR for Apple in general? Yeah, so um, as you said, like uh, you can run like Windows on on M1 uh, with either emulated or with uh, the uh, ARM version. Um, it's still, uh, I don't believe that we're going to get to a point where you can run uh, Windows based VR headsets through like to the Mac to M1 directly, mm -hmm. um, just because of the um, of the graphics connection. So disregarding the Oculus for a second. Uh, the, your VR headset is still like a monitor, like a display. Right. And uh, commonly you would not get a direct like pass through of a display to a VM, uh, other than maybe with the Thunderbolt display. That I could see that happening, but then you would need to actually get a, a headset that works with Thunderbolt. So uh, right. that could, that I'm not seeing, really seeing that. Um, uh, other than, of course, uh, Apple. So Apple is a big fan of Thunderbolt, as we know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sure. uh, right. uh, they have, um, well, they haven't announced anything in regards to a headset, but uh, there's there's lots of speculation uh, going right. around uh, that they would be working on one. So um, right. if right. if we if we like look at what Apple has done in the past, uh, a like a, a headset from them would likely involve, uh, especially for developers, you would need to connect to a Mac. Uh, so that would involve Thunderbolt, and um, well, that, then in this case uh, you would be obviously natively on M1, so you could you could run like uh, the code on your Mac and then uh, see it on the headset for debug debugging purposes. Now, whether you will actually be able to run the the uh, apps uh, on your Mac with like more intense graphics than on the headset, I'm not sure. Right. So with the Oculus, you have. Um, or we should maybe we should say Quest because it's now Meta, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, um, with the Quest, uh, you would have you have the app running on it uh, natively, and you can connect to it to install things and to stream if you're using the Steam VR. Um, I'm not sure how Apple will do it. They they could go the same way. Uh, they could have a processor in the headset, and then you would load the apps onto it like it's a little iPhone on your on your face. <laughs> right. Um, and then you would not get any benefit from connecting to Mac. So right, right. that I could see that being the like the most likely option just because it makes it uh, a simpler device and sure. uh, customers love simplicity. So Chris, thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to cover before we finish up here? Oh, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, bringing some light uh, to UTM and also, yeah, of course. Um, yeah uh, allow me to share some details. Um, uh, I've actually been really um, uh, fortunate to work on a VR game for the past year, as I mentioned at the beginning. Okay. So um, 
Uh, let's uh, leave a link to a Labyrinth Deluxe, uh, a Crusoe Quest below. It's a VR game for uh, MetaQuest and for PC. Okay. And I hope uh, you enjoyed. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to try that out. I'm going to make uh, my own gameplay video of that. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, so I should have that uh, next week. So uh, cool. I'll have to have you back and we'll have to talk about that at that time if, if, if you want to do that. Sounds good. Yeah. So, Chris, thanks so much. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I, I, I truly, uh, I had uh, a lot of pain involved in just going through this entire project, and I had no idea how he's going to present that. And so, the ability to have a back and forth with you, and and you know, to both of our surprises, for me to find your video, and then you to then you know reach out to me regarding uh, something else, it was just like, oh wait, hold on, you're that guy, you know. And so this was perfect. <laughs> so thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks.